Lewin Leonka, also known as the Old Fart King. The tender age of 70 is when he actually ascended the throne of Britannia in Corone. <coughs> Kept alive and young by the uh, Lady of the Lake. Man of chivalry and politeness. Except to those he wants to hack in half with his mighty blade. Despite being a, a geriatric old fart, still, he does what he needs to do to battle the enemies of Britannia. And so, it is me, Ashen Ninja, who has decided to uh, to a, uh, a new uh, legendary uh, start guide. So, this legendary start guide is for, of course, as you can tell, Corone and Luen Leon Kerr. The faction effects that come with uh, the Mighty Luen is uh, a campaign movement range for all characters plus 10%, leadership aura size of plus 50% for, 50 for all lords when they are attacking. Luen himself starts with all nightly vows unlocked. Uh, he has chivalry plus 10. And he has melee attack plus 8 when fighting against undead greenskins and all the forces of chaos for his army. Same with leadership plus 12. And he also has the passive ability Blessing of the Lady. It doesn't tell me what that does there, but we'll find out soon enough once we're actually in there. It starts with uh, a fair few extra troops. Uh, these are just some. He actually starts with two units of Pegasus Knights. I believe it's two units of Knights of the Realm, and he also has two field trebuchets. So he actually starts with a pretty decent army. This is, of course, going to be on Legendary, very hard Legendary, the hardest I can put it onto. <coughs> so let's go in. So also, as always, everything that happens in this, except for anything bad, can be should be able to be replicated in lower difficulties as well. Uh, but, you know, except for things like poor, um, or extra poor, um, control and such things like that. So, the Bretonians do have a few unique, uh, characteristics to their race. Um, I have gone through these before when I did, uh, the Fey Enchantress, but we'll go through it again anyway. So... The Bretonians have chivalry. As you get gain more chivalry, you get more and more little traits, more and more uses of your green knight, who is a legendary hero, until you get to a point where it's limitless. Uh, and you'll have all lords starting with the questing vow as well. And it can change what uh, vows they actually start with. Now this actually gives you an ability to do you quite a bit of sort of a cheesy sort of thing um, and get free uh, oh well, knights free of upkeep. I'm not really going to go through that. Uh, it's fairly well documented about it, so we're not going to worry about that. Uh, you also have a peasant economy. So you've basically got a certain amount of peasant units that you can have and if you start going over that, the upkeep for all your non-knight units, so essentially your peasant you units, such as saber. trebuchets, you can see they've got their little peasant unit, uh, spearmen and those sorts of guys, uh, all of their upkeep will go up and you'll earn less money. Is basically uh, the gist of that. Now as Always with Luan, we start with a Heaven's Mage. She's disciplined, that's actually pretty good. Last one I tried was Knowledgeable. I was like, oh, I like Knowledgeable. Knowledgeable is my favourite of traits for the mages in uh, Bretonian armies, but oh well. Now, also, the other thing you have is you do not have uh, supply lines. Therefore, you can recruit more lords without actually increasing the cost of 
your various units. So see here, 63 for them. Normally you'd add another 15% to that by recruiting, say, this guy. My reputation but as you can see, it's still 63. So no supply lines, which is nice. And we are going to, now that we've got him, do some recruiting. Now, since I don't want that building, I'm going to delete that one. And I am going to pop in this building here to increase our economy. <coughs> and along with increasing kings, we are going to also up Corone. So being turn one, what we want to do is take Marienburg, which seems like an impossibility because look at that, we're not even going to make it to Marienburg. But as you defeat armies, you get a little bit more, you essentially regain the movement that you used while actually moving a little bit closer. So we'll actually be in range of Marienburg if we can destroy this army. Now, what will happen in the next turn or two is as well because of the way Protonians work again, uh, going to have a dilemma that is going to mean we have much, much less uh, public order. Um, unless we blow up a orc and goblin, uh, what's it, um, province thing. <sighs> province thing, yeah, that'll do. <laughs> um, region, yes, region. Uh, so there's that, but because we'll be able to take Marienburg, and who we're already at war with, uh, that actually won't be a problem. So, let's start with fighting this battle. Now, we want to f we want to lose pretty much nothing in this battle if we can. So, we're going to fight it manually. Um, I'll go through Lewin's uh, actual uh, points, lines, and that sort of stuff once I've done with the battle so that I can show that off when I'm adding a point in. Now let's start this deployment. Gonna go with a fairly standard uh, artillery ranged melee style with her back there. Lewin can be up there a bit. We can chuck our Knights of the Realm over here, our Pegasi over here. Now you can actually. Um, automatically resolve this battle, but you will lose uh, a fair few units, and then you probably won't actually be able to uh, defeat uh, Marienburg. And that's not what we're after. We want Marienburg. That's their range two. They're just about there, so we'll advance him a little bit. Get our trebuchets rocking out pretty soon. That should be good. Knights of the Realm getting in position. Alrighty, now. Let's hit the mortars. Mortars are not scary for flying units. Not at all. Now let's move them up. Got our rocks smashing in. Over here, as soon as we can, we are going to get some rear charges into these crossbowmen as well. Yeah, this will be it for. Copying some cross, gonna cop a little bit of crossbow damage, but that's okay. It's good, and we've now shattered the mortars. We might lose a knight at the rate we're going here, but that's okay. We can deal with that. Now, Luan Leon Kerr, being the legend that he is is actually not bad at taking on oh, oh, uh, wheel and get out wheel and get out come on out 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 
You just keep chasing them for the moment. Go for those swordsmen over there. Now, Lewin is going to be fighting here. What's he got? Mm, yeah, we'll chuck him that. Why not? Alright, we got Pegasus Knights up. We'll smash them in for a charge. Here, oh, I got caught by the spearman. Damn it. lose any of them though so that's good oh he's not doing very well here jeez let's uh, pull him back a bit he's losing that fight so that's not what we want at all alrighty let's uh They haven't really worked out what they're doing in the back back lines here yet, so we're just gonna let them do their thing for now. Uh, pull out of that, head him away from them. Uh, you guys can go charge them. You guys charge those swordsmen. So Louis taking probably a little bit more damage than I would have liked, but that's okay. What are you idiots shooting at? Why are you shooting at them? Shoot at them. Get those spearmen out of here. Uh, go for these other crossbowmen so they don't get a chance to shoot at us. Ah, excellent. There we go. Army loss penalties have kicked in. Good stuff. Oh, looking good. We don't need to chase anything down because they are going to get wiped out. So, pretty good for everyone there. The trebuchets really held their own. Just a nice. Next stop, Marienburg. We haven't even gotten through that first turn yet. Now, don't need the money at the moment. As you can see, we'll lose shiver if we take that. I am going to take the replenishment just to replenish that little bit that we did lose. Oh, head with it. Excellent. That's that's very good. All right. Now, as I was saying before the battle, I'll show off Lewin's trait. Now he's got the fairly normal old blue line that they've always had. So things like control. Recruitment, income from farms, untainted, these sorts of things. Nothing that really reduces costs or anything like that. So I generally only do the points like that, and I do try and get lightning strike with him. Red lines the same as always as well, buffing the various units and that sort of thing, depending on how you want Lewin to be in his army. Now, where it gets more interesting is not even this yellow line, because that's just your usual fight here line. So up here we've got upkeep minus 25% for Knights of the Realm and Questing Knights, which is nice. Diplomatic Relations, which is okay. Construction cost and time for barracks buildings, which is not really that useful, to be honest. Uh, more uh, Chivalry and Paladins. Paladins are very good, especially in the late game when you can do a full stack of them. They fucking wreck shit. It's lots of fun. Uh, passive ability, the uh, ladies champion, so you can get him at uh, rank 6, get him some fucking regeneration, so hello to that. Uh, you can also get him beloved son of Bretonia, which affects allies in range, map wide, and it gives them all of that bonus stuff. And you can give him a bonus to the lion's shield, which is his special ability. He has two purple items, the armor brilliant for more armor and more ward save, and the sword of Corone, which is quite good with plus six melee, weapon strength, flaming attacks, less up, uh, reducing upkeep, recruitment cost, and more income per battle. And he gets the ability, sort of Corone with it as well, which reduces melee defense and armor of those enemies around him. He can get a Royal Pegasus, but he can also get the Bequee. 
uh, his hippogriff, uh, and that's really awesome. Uh, we've got over here some casualty replenishment rate for his uh, for his knights. That's just leadership. That's his leadership aura. Who cares? Cooldown for rally. That's fine. Don't worry about that. Figure loss reduction always good as well, and then we've got some missile resistance. So he's not exactly an exciting lord or anything like that, but he's not exactly boring either. So he's he's quite good. And once he's got all of his purples and he's got his regeneration, he's a bit of a beast. Now, when it comes to technology, you've got kind of a few options. You've got you can buff your economy, or you can get ready for your. You can do things like your. Blah, confederations and some decrees that do various things that I've honestly never really worried too much about a lot of these I don't really because they're um, very specific to specific races you're going to be fighting I try not to worry about it I just want to be good against everything so it's very low on my priority list I normally go for a couple of things with economics first and then we get through that and a couple of these just to boost a little my economy a little bit before I then move into confederating things like Artois and that sort of thing. Alright we'll put, hop in the plus 15 growth just here and as you can see we are well in range of Marienburg and their nine defenders now so let's let's kill them now Kill the defenders of Marienburg. <coughs> We're going to turn their skulls into these really nice goblets. Um, and it's a good way of honouring your enemy because of how wonderful they are. It's also a great way to look like a psychopath to other people. So, very, very nice way of being both nice and horrible at the same time. Alright, I'm going to pop them there, and we'll set up over here, where we won't be able to get fired on with by those towers. Pop old Louis there, I think that all looks pretty good. Turn off auto shot, because we don't want them just shooting whatever they want. And let's get the field trebuchets shooting. got Louis up here doing his defense thingy. He's got a potion of full hardiness. We'll speed this up so we'll smash through at least this bit. Right, so I'll knock down that tower. It's not really taking any damage, which is good. Alright. So it does take a lot of ammo. We're going to get try and get rid of some of these crossbowmen as well. None of that worked very well, did it? Yeah, neither is that. That's no good. That, that's looking better. That's good. Pile them up together. That means we're more likely to hit both units now. Ah, sad. Now, what we do want to do is we want to punch a hole in the wall as well, so I might actually quickly do that before we go and use up all of our ammo. Do that just over here. Move our Pegasi up. Now, this is one of the great things about starting with Pegasus Knights. Is we're going to do a bit of clearing on this wall. Now, we don't want to get into combat with these halberdiers. They, they will shred us. crossbowmen nicely. They are terrible in melee so they ain't gonna do squat to us which is good. Uh, yeah, pull them out don't don't go actually inside. No landing inside. There we go. 
Lovely stuff. <clears throat> Let's bring up all of these troops. We've basically sorted out their ranged troops now. But just in case, to make sure they don't get silly ideas about sallying out against me. Going to want to do a bit of damage to these units as well. Bring up the bowmen. Don't while we reposition, let's just get that going a bit faster. Uh, a fair few halberdier units, but that's okay. See what we can wipe out over here first. I'm sure that will make Louis a happy, happy chappy. So again, the aim of the game is to lose as few as possible. I know these guys would be called just peasants, but they're my peasants, damn it. Therefore, I want to keep them alive. So the halberdiers are the ones that are the danger to our Pegasus Knights. So if we can take them out with ranged and then fight things like swordsmen in melee, that's probably for the best for us. Now, this isn't the best place to be shooting at halberdiers. Well, better than if they were swordsmen, but let's pull back and... Oh, no, 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 no. One misclick and you fucked the whole thing, haven't you? Alrighty. So, uh, so as you can see, we lose a lot of shots on the crenellations there. That's okay. Let's stop that for now, and instead we'll move over to the trebuchets. We should be able to wreak a decent toll here. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Get some back into the courtyard. Where they have no defence against our range of arrows. Hold down shift when I'm selecting, damn it. What am I, terrible at this game? Oh, wait, no, never mind. Don't answer that. Yes, I'm terrible at it, but hey. So this will be how about you, unit number two, pretty spanked. Yeah, just a little bit further forward and yeah, get some more shots into them. Come on. There you go, isn't that lovely? Let's just move around here a bit. <coughs> now, the reason we're not shooting the swordsmen, they do have shields. So it's just better to do it this way. And since the halberdiers are now on the walls, let's go and get our Pegasus Knights to go and play with these swordsmen way up the back. Range to Zusa. Alright, get the Pegasus Knights off them. Before we get sandwiched, come on. Out, 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 out. Uh, fall on them as well, why not? Get them out again. Oh, yeah, taking a little bit of damage there, it's no good. Uh, it looks like we've got some Pegasus Knights stuck in the units. So that's no good. Not what I wanted to happen, but shit happens sometimes. Try and pull them out. There we go, that's better. So, because that worked so well and they're broken, we may as well hit the other swordsman unit again. <coughs> Have lost a couple, but that's alright. So let's see if we can get a most, at least most of them lifted off here. Yeah. And we will 
come back in again. Now the, the Palbadiers haven't decided to join us yet. Those guys haven't decided to come in either, that's good. They're now breaking. Let's get this other swordsman unit broken again. So we've got them broken, so if we take out enough, we'll get them shattered as well. Should be nice. Ooh, we've managed to break one of the units that was on the walls as well, even though we weren't fighting it. But may as well change our target then and hit them. So we can shatter them as well. Yeah, they're shattered now. These guys are wavering already, so let's uh, get rid of them. They won't really be able to do anything. They're facing the wrong way to be braced for us. So. Beautiful. All right, let's get them out now. We've got another unit of halberdiers heading this direction. No, nope, swordsmen. Okay, well, that's all right then. But we want to get them away from those halberdiers that are over there. Okay, they're not actually going to come, apparently. Well, in that case, let's get our... Let's get our archers in, see if we can convince them they do want to come this direction after all. Our spearmen can come in as well. Do this right, it'll be fine. It's about get yeah, doing it right basically. Will the peasant bowmen be in range? Don't really think they will be. Let's get them. As you say. A bit closer. There we go. Just in range now, but we'll get our melee units in first. So we Just in case these swordsmen start off. Swordsmen don't seem too keen to move, which is good. Just march you guys up a little further. Yeah, you guys up behind them. We don't have a lot of shots left. They do have shields, but that's all right. We may be able to get the army loss penalty without having to engage. Uh, that doesn't look like that's going to work. Get Louis in. Get Pegasus Knights to come flying over and into them, and we'll get them. Try and get them out before all of that engages as well. Swiftly, post haste. Uh, come. Come on. At once. Out again. All right. Britannia, attack. Let's hit the halberdiers. If we do this hard enough, we will should be able to inflict the army loss penalty on them. No, that's not quite going to work. Let's see if we can re. Oh, there's the army loss penalties. Knew we'd get there in the end. And there we go, Marienburg taken in one turn. 
to get that battle done. Only six losses. Lou and Leonk has lost a little bit of health. As you can see, our archers and our spearmen really do the main bulk of the damage. Our spearmen. Archers in our Pegasus Knights. Uh, we are just going to occupy it, not going to sack it. Our land. Beautiful. I am the blood of now that gives us another pain. two in the peasant economy, so we're going to do... Oh no, we can't do any recruiting. Aww. Oh, they don't have the recruitment building. Bastards. Sometimes they actually build the recruitment building. Oh well, that's okay. My and You'll get at least one more archer then. But what we'll also do is we'll recruit this Arthur Lord. Do you know who and we'll I do am? that here. Ta da! You seek counsel? Uh, Lu and Leonko, I do want to get Lightning Strike because it will actually make certain battles a bit easier. Um, I'll reduce his recruitment cost as well. Uh, for our Heaven's Damsel, I'm going to start with Wind Blast. Because that is quite a good spell. We're going to be coming up against uh, Orcs and Goblins next. So we want to be ready for that. Okay, so that's all looking pretty good for turn one. So that's it. Turn one in half an hour. Uh, that's it for this episode. We'll have a second half uh, coming out in a couple of days as well. Uh, so stay tuned for that. I am Ashen Ninja and please subscribe to me and uh, you'll see more of this kind of stuff and possibly some speculation stuff in the coming Total War Warhammer 3. So stay tuned for that as well. So until then, till next time, hope you have a good one, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.